Hi guys, PJ here taking a look at the PC version of Star Wars Battlefront 2. We're going to run through all the options and settings available to the game just to see how well we can configure this to run on, you know, whatever system you own. We're going to look at the sound, the graphics and the controller options. In a separate video, you'll notice uh, on my channel I've also done a comparison running PS4 Pro, Xbox One S and of course the PC version. Whether you're running it on ultra wide or a 4K TV, Hopefully these two videos combined will give you a rough idea of what your money will buy. Let's dive straight into those options and see what we've got with this game. Now this is the first time I've booted up the PC version, so I've got my crates here unopened. Um, let's go straight on to the options though for now. We'll have a quick look at gameplay later with some settings just to see uh, how well it runs and we'll be checking frame rate, etc. So into options, we have controls. Now, there is native Xbox One controller support, as you would expect. All I did was turn it on and it worked, so that's not a problem. DS4 support. Yes, the game seems to support DS4. I uh, switched it on. It was plugged in, wired, and it did support it. However, I got the wrong prompt showing. I was showing Xbox prompts as opposed to PlayStation prompts. Might be my system. Just on the Windows Creator update, and it's caused a few problems, niggles, so maybe that's my end. If any of you guys get PlayStation controller working with the correct prompts, please pop it down below in the comments so that I know it's uh, it's my end that's the problem. Okay, so we've got all your key bindings and stuff here. It's switched over to controller. Look, invert flight, yes, no, here's all your options. Feel free to uh, pause the video to look at these in detail. I'll just scroll through them for you right now. There we go. It's pretty, pretty standard, to be honest. It's not a, a really complicated game to use. It's the flight on it, for example, is nothing like Elite, where you've got to press and hold more than one button and do things. This this is very straightforward. So with those controls, you've got gameplay as an option. Uh, first person or third person. Now, I actually found that third person, you could see more of the area around you if there was a bad guy at the side of you. So uh, might want to consider trying third person on this game. Vibration, on and off, of course. And there's the rest of them for you. Objective outlines, what we got? Smart, always on, always off. Simple enough. Chat, pop up, hide, show. Back to pop up. Tutorials on and off. And let's go back. Let's go on to the next one. I'll jump down to audio, leave graphics to the last because that's always, I feel, the bigger uh, settings to look at and try out. So we've got master volume there, we've got music on and off output now this is an interesting one i was very pleased to see this and this is the same on the consoles as well as auto you have full support enhanced stereo which works very well if you're running a 2.1 um you know speaker system so you've got a sub and two satellite speakers that works very nicely surround 5.1 and 7.1 yes it does detect the difference so 5.1 fully supported but it will also fill in and work correctly on 7.1 i have tested it it sounds fantastic so if you've got the option of that you know and you want to turn it up a bit try it it's lovely okay moving on leave it on auto i'm pretty much going to stay with enhanced stereo i run a 2.1 on this pc only use the surround sound uh, to be honest when i remember to switch it on hmm. laziness Okay, so dynamic range, we have wide, medium, narrow, or headphone. So if you've got your headset on, that'll be the one. Okay. Subtitles on and off, obviously. Now then, let's jump straight into the... Hello, what's happening with it? There we go. Video settings. Okay, so colorblind profiles there, and we've also got brightness screen mode windowed full screen and borderless for some reason this is set to windowed don't know why change that later on um no, we'll change it change it now and see if we can see if we can crash the menu some games do success we did not crash the menu normally when i'm recording and you change that setting it will crash so i quickly paused recording there and uh, changed it over Okay, so you can choose your monitor or your screen. Uh, I had this plugged into the 4K HDR TV and it worked fine, no problem. Obviously, your PC's got to be powerful enough to support a game like this running 4K. Um, my PC is aging a bit now, so uh, I really must get on with my Ryzen build that I'm 
will get round to eventually. The case has sat there a month now and I've not touched it, but hey ho. Um, right, resolution. We're in an ultra wide monitor, so we've got an ultra wide display setting there. Obviously, you're going to get a better frame rate than me if you're running a normal 1080p monitor. Okay, so there's my options on ultra wide. We're going down to. Did I loop it then? Yes, I did. So down to 900 there, 768. 1280, 720. 720, I would say, that's the lowest. Okay. My monitor's overclocked, it's running 75 hertz. Obviously, you can go to 60. And I think you've got the option to go to. 30 because I had that pop up on my TV. Not sure if that'd work on a monitor. Uh, I'm using DisplayPort, so obviously with the TV that was HDMI. Uh, enable dynamic resolution on and off. As you can see, that is greyed out for me. Okay. Dynamic resolution, I would imagine, is going to be available in the full game. It's a very good idea. It works like the console. So if you're struggling to keep a set frames per second you can pop that on and it will dynamically adjust to try and keep that frame rate for you the consoles operate at I'll put this loosely 30 frames per second PS4 Pro does a pretty good job at keeping it at 30 frames per second the Xbox One S no it stutters don't get me wrong it's still perfectly playable but you look at my comparison video, you'll see what I mean. Okay, DX12 on and off. If you're running one of the newer AMD cards, uh, you should be more leaning towards DX12. Um, if you're running an NVIDIA, they can be a bit touchy. You're going to have to try it. Sometimes they'll run faster on DX11. So give it a whirl. Try both. V-Sync on and off. Obviously, if you don't want screen tearing, put it on. I've got a free sync monitor that negates it i don't need it on at all and what we got here motion blur amount resolution scale mm. bump that one up if you have the gpu power to handle it and with this game i am talking gtx 1070 1080 1080 ti and vega pretty much anything else is going to struggle bumping that resolution scale up it's uh, it's a good looking game you know without doing that so pushing that on as well you are pushing a lot more you know for the gpu to render graphics quality we have auto here which on my old and i do say old because it is now r9 290x it has defaulted to as you can see pretty much ultra i can't scroll down because it's on auto we'll have to go into uh, manual there to do that let's go to ultra there we go nope still not scrolling down okay why well, can't I go to advanced settings there we go custom so, bear in mind an R9 290X, uh, the R9 390X is a rebranded version of it, slight up clock, and also the RX 470, 480, 570, 580 is pretty much the same card, it's just a lot more power efficient than the older ones that actually, you know, you need a small power station to power them all the time, and the heat for kick out is horrendous, but I'm digressing. So, Basically, this will cover all you guys with the newer LRX cards as well. You will just gain two or three FPS across the board using those newer cards because of the clock. Okay, so we have texture quality. I think they're all going to go low, medium, high, ultra. Looks like it. I'm just going to quickly scan through some of them. Now, if you run in something like a GTX 970, Keep an eye on the VRAM. You don't want it to go above three and a half gigabytes because it will slow the game down a lot if it tries to go beyond that. GTX 1060, uh, three or six gigabytes should have no problem with this game. Uh, GTX 1050 Ti, you want to be looking at sort of medium settings to be honest with you. If you're running ultra wide, you're running more pixels, so you may have to go down a step. If you're running a 1080p monitor, 16 by nine, medium should be your bag spoke to a couple of people with different configurations to myself and both of them are running this fine even low-end systems compared to high-end systems so let's have a look anti-aliasing we have fxaa high medium low it actually changes look as you that's very good if you watch the background while i change this look you can see the implementation 
as it goes on. I'm struggling to see any difference between TA a and FXAA high, I must admit. Maybe in motion. Off is a disaster. Look at the Jaggies. Yeesh. No one likes Jaggies. Okay, so we'll, we'll go with FXAA high, I believe. That's going to be less taxing than TAA. Try that one in game. Anyway, I mean, to collusion, we're on medium. There's high, and there's ultra. It's nice that you can do this actually in game. So if we go texture quality, turn that all the way down to low. Don't seem to be doing anything, does it? Maybe that's in game only. Shadow quality. A little bit of a difference showing up there. Right, okay. Let's try it at ultra. And we will quickly check on VRAM usage, FPS, and all the rest of it. Okay, so we're going to go into the, uh, if you like, the bot match, yeah, and uh, see what it's running like. I mean, on this menu here, as you can see, we're running at 3.2, 3.3 gigabytes of VRAM, and we're looking at 9.8 gigabytes of normal RAM. Let's see what it plays like. I mean, it's showing mm, CPU usage is sort of middling. Let's have a, let's have a go and, and see them. Um, so I'll be concentrating more on uh, things like the FPS. Right, we've got some stuttering going on here pretty badly. But then again, we had stuttering on the uh, console versions as well. Oh, it's just settled down. There we are. got stuttering, very similar. However, this game does look significantly better than even the PS4 Pro version. I'm quite impressed with that. That looks very nice. So what we got then? 63 FPS. We have got double the FPS of the consoles. And 3.4 gigabytes of VRAM. Not bad. Looks nice on the ultra wide. You can tell the textures are a higher quality than the consoles. You can see it stand out a mile in this room. Like I say, if you watch the, the comparison video, you will also see that. Um the only thing that worries me with the PC version is the length of the game. How how many people will stay committed to playing it? You can still get a you know a reasonably quick game on Star Wars One on Battlefront One, so um, could be an option. That has settled down now. I believe that initial stuttering was down to the fact I've installed it on a 7200 speed normal hard drive and not an SSD. So uh, maybe that's it. Bearing in mind, I'm also recording using Radeon Relive onto uh, an SSD. So it's going to slow it slightly. Not too bad, though. We're still running 60 FPS easy enough on that. So let's knock that down now to the other extreme. Let's go to low. So see what you guys can run it on if you're you know, using an older card, maybe a 2 gigabyte graphics card. Let's see, uh, let's see what that sort of runs at. So we'll go back to options, so you can see me change it here. Okay. Ultra high, medium, low. Okay, that's low. So everything is pretty much off. Let's go into game. And start. Okay, it's still not looking too bad, actually. It shows how good the artwork is on this game. Uh, you got some picks and crawls, some aliasing. Obviously, the textures is the distance as they scroll further out uh, look blurry. Well, we're still using three gigabytes of VRAM. Um, I wonder if that's sort of a minimum for this game. FPS at 140, so uh, it does scale well as far as keeping your high FPS settings, and it does still look quite nice actually. It's just you can see all the artifacts around the edge of the characters quite badly. That would personally annoy me. I'd have to have it ranked up a little bit higher. Plays fine, very smooth. I can expect with this sort of FPS. Now I'm running a, an older 8350 uh, chip, FX 8350. I'm running at 4.2. As you can see, the core load is. Mediocre, sort of three quarter level, I would say. Nothing major. The game's clearly designed with the console CPUs in mind. Um, 
kind of stuck to the back for the same. We do get that on the console, so I'm going to put that down to the other beta. Okay, let's have a quick look at multiplayer. Okay, so we've got graphic settings on auto, and as you load in, as you notice there, there's a little bit of stutter as you load in. FPS taking a much bigger hit now, there's more going on in the game, as you can see. Oh, still smooth enough up to now. Remember, the consoles do run at 30 FPS. So, uh, you know, you, you're still running way above that. If you want to lock 60, you're going to have to, if you've got a similar spec system to mine, you're obviously going to have to knock that down a little bit, aren't you? Not really a big deal, though. And of course, on PC, if you play multiplayer, go with the mouse keyboard, because this controller is too slow. Very good looking game. We've captured the atmosphere and everything very well. And I'm about to get killed or shot. Let's move out of the way. So we got 58 FPS. I think I saw it drop to sort of 45 at one of the lowest ports. Um, sort of 11 gigabytes of normal RAM used and 3.8 gigabytes of VRAM being used on auto setting, which was pretty much ultra. in between the formats and you do have uh, a capable PC shall we say PC is certainly an option just worry about the player base um, you know whether it keeps its numbers if you want to try the different game modes personally I'd be more interested in the campaign on this game and PC is where I'll be playing it so uh, we will see definitely a nice looking game with that, I think we've covered all the options and settings to a decent extent. If you've got any questions, please pop them in the comments below. And thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.